Yo! Welcome back to One More Mana. My name is Derek, and today I am so excited to kick off an awesome month, month and a half for Commander players everywhere. And this is, we already have the Brawl pre-con that's starting to get spoiled. I'm not a fan of Brawl, but the legendary creature looks awesome, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But in addition, we have Commander 2019 that has just started to get spoiled. I'm, I'm already building, don't worry. I'm over here brewing for those legendary creatures. Those will be coming soon. And on top of that, Throne of El Drain is coming soon. Dude, there's so much. It's a little overwhelming. We're going to go ahead and have a bunch of awesome opportunities to look at some crazy new commanders. All right, so yeah, so today we're looking at one of the commanders from the Brawl Precon, the one that's been spoiled so far, and it is Chulain Teller of Tales. And uh, yeah, it's either going to be, I've been try, I've been going at this for a minute now. It's, I'm stuck between Chulain, Kulain, Shulan, maybe Shulane or Chulane. I don't know. Chulane sounds like someone who tells some tales. I don't know. So I think we're going to go with Chulain for now. And if I change it up in the video, just kind of, just kind of roll with it. So Chulain Teller of Tales is, it looks like a crazy commander. It is two in Bant, so green, white, blue for a 2-4 Vigilance creature, and obviously the rest of the text, like most commanders, it wears, is where it gets interesting. It's whenever you cast a creature spell, you get to draw a card and then play a land. This this is ridiculous. It's multiple land drops, card draw on a card, and then on top of that, you can pay three and tap it to bounce one of your creatures to allow you to, again, just cast another creature to draw another card, play another land. Now, I'm sure this seems like a just a crazy powerful commander. This seems like the type of card that can be super broken. Now, I'm sure if you build it a certain way with tons of lands, tons of creatures, you can turn it into the type of deck that just blows people out of the water. And for everybody who wants to build it like that, you know, good for you. I I'm, I'm look forward to, to dying to it regularly at a, at a table near you. But, you know, I kind of like to go for more of a flavor, kind of a stylistic build of deck and while you know people had crazy thoughts and broken thoughts about the commander my first thought when i saw him was chulain is gonna let me play bent merfolk and i got so excited i love merfolk never had a chance to play sig river guide who's a popular merfolk commander but i do love kumena kumena is one of my favorite decks that i played for a while and it does some crazy things but i always did want to be able to combine all the merfolk because you have you know a lot from lore when you had white and blue merfolk and then all of a sudden in in ixalan you got the simic merfolk and there's never really been anything to combine that and i feel like chulain does an awesome job of allowing us to do that for a number of reasons like any tribe merfolk care about getting as many of them as possible onto the field and then through synergies that the more merfolk you get kind of just the more broken it gets they can synergize crazy with each other with things like island walk and throwing plus one counters on each other and all types of stuff and if you get enough, you can just take people out, and Chulain lets you fill your board. Like, what Chulain normally wants you to do is play low CMC creatures, and that's what Merfolk are. I think it's just a great kind of accidental synergy. I don't know if they did it. I don't know if they made him the almost perfect Bant Merfolk commander by accident or on purpose. Either way, I'm happy about it. So, yes, today we're going to be going over some of the cool Merfolk synergies. Now, if you're not familiar with Merfolk, I won't go into some of the Kind of just stuff you see in every merfolk deck. You're always going to have the lords that are giving everything. Island walk. You're always going to have, like I said, some of those plus one counter synergies. What I want to go through specifically in today's deck are the merfolk synergies that go closest with Chulain himself. Within the deck, there's tons of other merfolk synergies that you know allow you to kill everyone. But what Chulain does specifically with certain cards, I think, is what makes him so cool in a merfolk deck. So we have tons of creatures and almost exclusively merfolk, obviously. And I'm going to look at some of these, like I said, that take so much advantage of what Chulain's able to do for you. The first two that I'm going to talk about are Forerunner of the Heralds and Merrill Harbinger. These are merfolk tutors. And the fact that you can cast the merfolk tutor, which is a creature, bounce it with your commander, and then be able to basically every turn just tutor for more merfolk is awesome. Merfolk, again, they have a lot of utility merfolk. There's different merfolk for different situations that you want. And be able to just basically handpick them every turn like this is amazing. Not to even mention the fact that when you cast these, you are also drawing that card and getting a chance to play that other land. Basically, merfolk with ETBs are what we want to focus on because, again, we get the value of being able to just bounce them and recast them, which is awesome. And in the case of tutors, everyone knows how powerful tutors are. And with a, a creature-heavy, merfolk-heavy deck, Having the right merfolk at the right time is just super necessary. 
Tempest Caller is another great one. When it enters the battlefield, you just tap down an entire opponent's board of creatures, which is awesome. And now as a one-off effect, this can be powerful. But again, because you can just bounce it and just keep replaying this, it can get insane. It is so, so strong. This bounce effect also can work as protection. So if you do get this out, someone knows you're going to bounce it. If they do try to kill it, you can just bounce it in response, get it back, and then get ready to tap down everyone's board again. This is awesome, and especially in a deck with lots of creatures, you want to be able to just swing in without having to worry about anybody blocking. Tashana is another awesome card in this deck. It's just, it's great because you cast it, you're going to have lots of merfolk on the board, you draw lots of cards, and then you know what, next turn, if you didn't get what you wanted, why not just bounce Tashana, cast it again? And that's what's so cool about this commander is, yeah, it's a lot of mana, but because every time you cast a card, you're just playing lands out of your hand. And with Merfolk, you have the opportunity for big card draw. And that's what's coolest is, you know, normally you cast two lane, you draw the card, if it's a lane, you put it out. But what if your hand already has 20 cards in it? And with Merfolk, you know, Tashana being a great example of it, just blue in general, you have the opportunity to draw crazy numbers of cards. So if you have a big hand of cards, it's essentially like a, another burgeoning where you're just dropping lands out of your hand because you will be casting lots of creature spells. And Tishana is a great way to get that going. And in a deck like this where you do have so many small creatures, you do want some bigger mana payoffs. And I feel like Tishana is a great way to just load your hands with either threats or answers and just get ready for anything that might come. Now, there's a couple more Merfolk I am going to talk about. Another one is Harbinger of Tides. This card is awesome. It has the ability at instant speed to bounce one of your opponent's creatures, which is amazing protection. And this is awesome because if you play it for Flash, it's four mana. If you play it Sorcery Speed, it's only two mana. And the ability to just keep bouncing this back to your hand and to keep recasting it with the amount of mana you can generate in this deck from, again, just drawing cards, dropping lands, is amazing. And essentially what you can do is just, you know, outvalue people. You're dropping so many lands, you're able to ramp so hard and a lot of your creatures cost so little that if you're paying five mana total to play the Harbinger of Tides and bounce it, if someone's trying to drop just huge bomb creatures and they don't have the same amount of ramp you do, just keep bouncing it back to their hand and they won't be able to catch up. Because every time you're doing that again, you're also drawing a card and having the ability to drop another land. You can outvalue people like crazy with some of the abilities to just repeatedly cast creatures in this deck. And the last one I'm gonna talk about for now is Deep Root Elite. This card is awesome. Now we do want, with a deck like this, you just want incremental value. You wanna keep getting value. You wanna keep being able to cast creatures and just get value every time you're doing it. And over the course of the game, just build this crazy engine that's able to just beat everybody out. Now, your commander does an amazing job of this because you are drawing cards and ramping, but Deep Root Elite does something amazing as well. And it just starts throwing plus one counters everywhere. So those turns that are dropping a few merfolk, drawing some cards, dropping lands, also turn into buffs for your creatures. And you just start throwing these plus one counters around and merfolk can get out of hand like that. If all of a sudden you just threw three, four plus one counters on your board in a turn, everything can be unblockable. Or like we just talked about tapping down your opponent's board. Yeah, you're gonna have just an army of fish that are just flying at people. And once they start getting a little big, they get scary. And obviously I already mentioned them. We are running Sig River Guide and Kumena in this deck, of course, because that's the whole point is to be able to put them in the same deck. Sig does a great job of protecting whichever merfolk you want to protect. A different board states, different combination of merfolk. A different card might be the most important card at that given moment. Sig will do an amazing job of protecting whatever is the most important merfolk on your board at a given time. And Kumena just, Kumena just benefits. If you have a bunch of merfolk, you want that Kumena out, you can draw cards, throw plus one counters, or make Kumena unblockable if you really want. It is great flexibility. And when you have a board full of merfolk, you want cards like Kumena that benefit from it to get, I'm going to say this word a thousand times in this video, but to get even more value. Looking at the instance, nothing too surprising or crazy here. The one card I'm going to point out, and this is not a surprising card at all, is Heroic Intervention. You need a card like this in this deck. This deck, its whole purpose is to just dump merfolk on the board and get value off of that. Benefit from having merfolk synergies. And if someone tries to board wipe, that can set you back a lot. And Tulane will let you rebuild much faster than usual because it's just letting you draw more cards, ramp hard, and basically just get a whole bunch more merfolk right back out. But at the same time, you want to be able to prevent those board wipes. Heroic intervention, a lot of times is better than a counter spell because it's protecting your board and not protecting everyone else's. Looking at the sorceries, Summon the School is an awesome card because it really fits the theme of what we're doing with our creatures. We want to be able to keep replaying, bouncing, and reusing all of our creatures. 
And this isn't a weird way of doing that. You can get merfolk tokens, tap your other merfolk, and just get it back and play it again to get more merfolk. And so many merfolk care about being tapped that this is just, you get double the value. You get some of the cool tap on tap abilities that our commander isn't directly taking advantage of. So having cards like this to take advantage of that is really cool. And you just get more merfolk out. This card is, it, it, this card's awesome. Now you don't get the cast triggers obviously with these merfolk tokens, but again, you want to get that benefit from having as many merfolk out as possible. Taking a look at the artifacts, there is one I'm going to highlight, and this just fits that whole theme of wanting to cast things and get that buildup of value when it's Door of Destinies. Well, this can get out of hand because basically you can get to the point, especially late in the game, when you have all this mana that you're ramping into, where you're easily playing two or three merfolk in a turn, on, on a slow turn. And those cast triggers that are just going to build up counters on this Door of Destinies, a, a board of, you know, maybe four or five merfolk without any buffs, you can do a little bit of damage. Now, when all of a sudden Door of Destinies is there and you have a bunch of counters on there and those little merfolk all of a sudden aren't so little anymore and they still have all that unblock ability and all those crazy abilities, that gets scary. Now, this is a card you can switch out for a card like Coat of Arms as an example. I just love kind of just the this synergy of having all these cast effects and I feel like having the cast effect with Door of Destinies kind of just, I don't know, it all kind of just blows together for me but either of those would do a great job in this slot of just building your board's power up looking at the enchantments the first one i have to talk about is Alluren. this card is crazy and i i, I love it. i never had heard of this card before i started researching stuff for chulane and it is so cool and it basically lets any players cast creatures with cmc three or less for free at instant speed it just seems ridiculous the thing is obviously it's a universal effect but most Decks are not going to have as many CMC 3 or less creatures as you will. Most Merfolk don't cost very much. And the coolest thing about this is you are casting it for free. You're not just playing it. So you're getting the card draw trigger and getting to play more lands and get more Merfolk and maybe draw into more and just keep looping that. You can get into situations where you're essentially just getting 3, 4 Merfolk out for free, drawing all these extra cards, playing all these extra lands. And it's only a 4 CMC enchantment. It's ridiculous. The next one I'm going to talk about is Kindred Discovery. Now, what's better than drawing a card every time you cast a creature? Why not get in two? Because we're running almost entirely merfolk. And with Kindred Discovery, every time one of those merfolk ETBs or attacks, you're drawing a card. This is perfect. This is so perfect because we want to be able to swing with a whole bunch of merfolk. That's it. We want to be able to do that at some point. And to be able to just draw a whole bunch of cards off of it, why not? But the coolest part is with our commander, we're going to be keep casting and bouncing and casting things. Now, why not throw some extra card draw in there to just fill your hand up that much faster? The last one I want to talk about is Retreat to Coralheim. This is a super cool card because what this is going to let you do is, especially late in the game when you have lots of lands, there's, there gets a point in some decks where you're just playing a land doesn't really do anything for you anymore because you have so many lands out. You really don't need the extra mana at the end of the game. And this does a great job of kind of benefiting from those extra land drops you get from Shulane. Because basically what you can do is bounce a creature that you have so you can, you know, recast it for value. But then when you get to play that land off of that, you can then untap your commander and then go ahead and bounce it again. You can get into situations where you might be able to cast a creature two or three times in a turn because of all the mana you have. And these situations where you can, you know, get that value of drawing the cards, dropping lands, untapping your commander and possibly bouncing other creatures to keep recasting them. You get these value loops or you can just set up the perfect board state to get your merfolk through to just be slapping people with their fins. Looking at the lands, it's just basically a bant land base. There's really nothing crazy here. I do super recommend for you to put Reliquary Tower in there. You're going to want it because there will be some explosive card draw. And while card draw is always good, if you draw 30 cards, it's better to pick the best 7 of that 30 than not just be able to draw 30 cards. Obviously, I feel like I'm not breaking any news there, but... You want Reliquary Tower in there because there are certain times when you don't want to be, you know, if you're drawing a whole bunch of cards, you sometimes don't want to have to figure out what you're going to need in the future. You want to just have it in your hand. And another one, I've talked about this in any deck and can go in. If you're playing Simic, play this card. It's Alchemist Refuge. Being able to play creatures at instant speed is a cool way to just draw a card anytime you want and, you know, throw some extra lands out there. And there's certain creatures that you do want to sneak in on the end step before you start. Alchemist Refuge is a great way to do that, especially because it's only taking up a land slot. All right, now we are to the best part. How are all these fish people going to come out and kill your opponents? We love merfolk. They're awesome. They, the card is cool. They have cool synergies. But you do have to find a way to make them threatening enough to take everyone out. And this is how we're going to do it. So the first category, I'm going to group these two cards together. They get talked about a lot. 
And um, I'm, I guess there's no reason to say these aren't any surprises at all. They're, and every creature or token deck, you're probably going to see these. And it's Crater Hoof Behemoth and Triumph of the Hordes. Now, I already mentioned, we're going to get lots of Merfolk out. This is a great way to finish off the board, especially because you can give your Merfolk Island Walk or make them unblockable. And with Triumph of the Hordes, if they're unblockable, you really don't need much power on board to take everyone out. Really the same with Crater Hoof. If stuff gets big enough, stuff will get crazy. And the coolest thing about Crater Hoof is you can bounce it. So you can get that huge board buff effect when it ETBs. And then you know what? Just bounce it back to your hand and save it again for later. That is awesome. Being able to have a Crater Hoof. And it's just the, the, basically just the biggest boss move ever. You just drop it, take someone out, bounce it back. And be like, yeah, I got a Crater Hoof. Uh, nobody, nobody mess with me. I might just drop it again and take someone else out next turn. It's an awesome repeatable effect. And really does a better job than Triumph of the Hordes. But I love Phyrexia. I love my Infect, so it's going in there too. The next way to win the game is a weird kind of combination of cards. It's not really a combo, but it's two cards that do just, I guess, sort of combo together. And if you can get these out on the board for a turn or two, it's going to end the game. And it's Herald of Secret Streams and Cather's Crusade. I love Cather's Crusade. I don't really play white in a lot of decks, so I don't get the opportunity to play it much. But it is so, so awesome. And with this deck, because you get to cast so many merfolk, you're just throwing plus one counters around. And I've talked about Herald of Secret Streams before. You treat this almost like a Triumph of the Hordes, where you're just going to cast it and get the value right away. Because you don't want to let it sit on the board. You get Catherine's Crusade out. You know, if, you, if it can sit around and you can cast a few merfolk, get a whole bunch of plus one counters out, drop that Herald of Secret Streams. It's really easy to take someone out because... Oh my gosh, if you, again, you're dropping all those Morphos, those plus one counters add up so fast with Cather's Crusade. This is just an awesome combination of cards that isn't guaranteed, it's not like a Crater Hoof or Triumph, or, no, basically, you don't need much of a board state, you will need a board state for this, but it's just an awesome synergy that you get an opportunity to take advantage of, and as a Kumena Merfolk player, it is awesome to be able to see Cather's Crusade in a Merfolk deck. And then the last way, this is going to be kind of a fringe case. This is more how to kill a player rather than win the game. And it's a card I love so, so, so much. It's Wake Thrasher. This card is crazy. Again, I already talked about it. Merfolk, they're going to have Island Walk a lot of the time. You're going to be able to give them Unblockable. You have a number of ways to get damage in. You can tap down your opponent's board. We've talked about it. With Wake Thrasher, this is good in a lot of Merfolk deck. But the difference with this one is with Chulain, you're able to get so many lands out. And again, I've already talked about sometimes you get too many lands, you don't even know what to do with them. This is a card that takes advantage of that. Because if this card's out and you're just dumping all your lands into play, when you untap all those, all of a sudden this becomes massive. And I've played this card quite a few times and it never gets treated as the threat that I really feel like it is. It's a three drop that can just be massive. I mean, it's not hard to have 10 or 15 lands in play in this deck. Count that on top of all the merfolk you're going to have out. You're untapping all that. You're swinging at somebody for an insane amount of damage. And the thing I love most is, again, people see a Crater Hook, they know something serious is about to go down. People see a Triumph of the Hordes, they know. With a card like Wake Thrasher, at least in my experience, people don't react to it the same way. And it is a great way to just sneak kill somebody if they're not paying enough attention. And we all know. We all we, know, we all don't pay enough attention sometimes. If somebody plays a card, you don't really, you're not familiar with it, you don't play it. Like, that's not going to do it. It's a three-drop merfolk. Well, this three-drop merfolk might just take it it's gonna backhand you with its spin and knock somebody out of the game and that's gonna do it for this week's deck tech i really really hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully some other merfolk fans out there that had the same thought i did i don't know if anybody else saw two lane and was like merfolk but i did and and i just i love what it opened up to be able to have a bant merfolk deck now i know i think derevi was used for some bant merfolk at some point and i'm sure it did a really good job of it but the value engine you can get off of this and the ability just to dump merfolk dump your lands I really think this is the best Bant Merfolk Commander to date, and it is just an awesome opportunity to just put all these different Merfolk cards that couldn't all coexist before into a deck. So please, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if there's any other cool different builds you guys have for Tulane. It's a very open-ended commander, so I'm sure there's some crazy builds that y'all will come up with, and I would love to hear about them. In the coming, the coming weeks are going to be crazy. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're going to have deck techs coming from the phase commanders for the new C19 products, some of the hidden commanders in there. As always, say it every time. We love the patrons so much. Thank y'all for everything that you do for us. Unfortunately, I, I thought I was going to Vegas. I won't be in Vegas, but said and Ken will. So make sure you go ahead and beat them for me. Do your best. Take down. Don't let Ken bully anybody. This is a combat deck. Go out there and, and make sure you just keep countering it as much as you can. 
and you know have fun but i will be in gp atlanta for anyone who will be there i'll be there all day every day i mentioned in the last video i'm not trying to sleep much i will be living there so i look forward to being able to play with anybody that will be there it should be a really good time but until next time and be excited because we got a lot coming i will see you guys next time